I think there is still a lot of stigma attached to learning disability which, which needs to be dispelled and that comes through people knowing people and meeting people with a learning disability. It's, it's so important for, not just for them, but for us as a community to be living next door and with and around uh, people with learning disabilities so it's not a stigma, so there isn't all of those, those bad adjectives of fear. His disability is he has Down syndrome and autism, um, and he is a he's a very he's a man with great sense of humour. He's got a great sense of wit and a, and a quite a kind of um, cheeky sense of wit at times. Uh, I, I've obviously grown up with him. He's my first cousin, and, and I love him very dearly. And he's a he's a he's a kind he's a kind soul as well. Is he aware of just how famous you are? <laughs> yeah. I don't think he cares whatsoever, and that's why I love him. Uh, he, uh, I remember he came to see me in a play once, and um, and I think he liked that. He loved he loved War Horse, the play I was in. I don't think he's a big Thrones fan, no. No way. <laughs> no, he likes his Disney. Game of Thrones isn't for him, I don't so, think. So if Laurent, uh, very like these guys here, is, um, is a profound learning disability and, and needs 24-7 care, needs a, a sleep-in carer. We are kind of on a brink of, of, a, of a crisis where Mencap and other charities are, are going to be faced with a huge bill which they simply can't pay and without and if they're forced to pay this bill then then the care that they they've given someone like my cousin Laurel throughout his life the, the 178,000 people with severe learning disabilities in the you know in this country are going to be left without that care and that support 